tutorial, we are going to do the website case study for the Java Jam Coffee House. Now, I want you to follow along with the instructions as I do this because the next two websites, the Fish Creek and the Pacific Trails, you'll have to read the instructions and complete those tasks on your own. So if you follow along with the instructions, you'll have a better understanding of what the book is asking you to do for the next two projects. I'm not going to open the textbook on this video because I don't want to get in trouble for copyright law. <laughs> okay, so first thing, we need to create a new folder. If you look on page um, 67, in your book, it shows us a wireframe of what our page is going to look like. We have a header, a nav, a main. Inside the main section, we have a div, and then we have a footer. The task one, it says to create a folder on your hard drive called Java Jam to contain your Java Jam website. I want you to create that folder in your Chapter 2 students' files in your Google Drive shared folder. So I'm going to do a uh, file new folder, or you can do, you know, however you create a new folder, depending on what operating system you're using. Java Jam. Okay? So all the files related to this particular case study, we will save inside this Java Jam folder. When you do Pacific Trails, you'll make a Pacific Trails folder. When you do Fish Creek, you'll make a Fish Creek folder. Okay? All right, we will use task two says we will use a text editor to create the home page for the Java Jam Coffee House website. And then it shows a picture of that. Okay, so at the bottom, launch a text editor and create a web page with the following sp uh, specifics. We want a descriptive web page title. Um, so I'm going to pause the video. This video is probably going to be a little choppy because I'm going to stop and start a lot, okay, just to save us time on the video. So I'm going to save this file as index file, oop, 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 file save as, navigate to where I saved that Java Jam folder in my Chapter 2 Java Jam and index.html, okay? Now, once I have that saved, let's put our basic template structure and go ahead and get our title in there. And I'll be Okay, check your work. Make sure you have something like this. Step two on page 67, code the header element with the text Java Jam Coffee House contained within an H1 element. So in this body section, you would have something that looked like this. We have an open header tag, open H1, Type what we want to appear as text as H1, close H1, close header. Turning to page 68 on step three, it says place the following text within a nav element, use bold text, use the B element. We have the text home, menu, music, and jobs. Code anchor tags so that home links to index, menu links to menu.html, music to music.html, and jobs to jobs.html. Add extra blank spaces between the hyperlinks with the ampersand MBSP special character as needed. Okay, so we need to add a nav section and a bold section and have those close. And then we'll add anchors inside those nav sections. So it should have something that looks like this once you're finished. Pay close attention to your, even your capitalization matters. It's really important that you start um, being super careful about capital letters and lowercase letters, your spacing, all that jazz, okay? And then the text that will appear will appear like this. Let's make sure we're looking good. So I'm going to do Alt-B and that's what we have so far. Step four begins our main content. Code the main page within a main element, which I've already added. You can use the picture as a guide. We want to code an H2 that says relax at Java Jam. Then it says configure the following content in an unordered list. So we need to do a UL, and then each one of our items will be list items. 
Once you've completed your LIs, you should have something that looks like this. If we view in a browser, we now have this. Okay? Now the next section of 4 is 4C, where it says code the following address and phone and phone number contact information within a div element. Use line break tags to help you configure this area and add extra space between the phone number and the footer area. If we look on page 67, we can see after the phone number, there's some extra line breaks there. Okay, so let's see what that looks like. They said they wanted us to code a div and it is still in the main section. So before the main closes, we'll open up a div tag. And again, if you haven't noticed, this is one of those structural elements. It doesn't do anything. It's just going to help us out later on when we get to the CSS. Okay, so within this div tag, we want to type the address. So once you've completed that, notice we put a break after each um, area of the address, after each line of the address, but we put two breaks before this last one, so that'll give us some extra space. So if you open in a browser and look, it should look something like that. Now we can't see that extra space down here because we haven't yet input our footer. So let's go below the div and below the main because the main closes before the footer starts. Let's add a footer tag. These instructions say configure the copyright and email link information within a footer element. Use small text size using the small tag and italicized fonts. Okay, and then we're going to, well, you'll see. Okay, so we're going to do small inside of our footer. Then we're going to do italicized, and again, I'm just pre pressing enter so it's easier to read. We'll do copyright and then ampersand copy semicolon to get that copyright symbol. We'll say 2020 because it's the best year ever. Java Jam Coffee House. Now on the next line, so we need it to go down a line, so we have to do a break. We want to include our name and our, our email, a made up email. We're just going to use a made up email. Okay, so let's do an anchor href equals. Remember, how do we get an email link? Mail to, and let's just say our first name, so your first name at your last name.com. That way it'll be easier. Okay. Now let's close that and in between those anchors we need to type the text that we want to appear on the screen and in this case it's going to be uh, your first name at your last name dot com. Okay, so let's refresh it and see if we have it looking correctly. Looks good. Now if we want, what we should do now is check our validation service and make sure everything's correct. Okay, now that we have the index page completed um, and we've checked our work on that and we validated it, let's look at page 69 where we're going to create the menu page. So often when we're working on websites, a lot of the basic structure will be the same on every page. So why would you retype everything over and over again? That would just be ridiculous. So let's save this index file as our menu page and then just delete what we don't need. Okay, so go file, save as, and then make sure you're in the correct Java Jam folder and let's change the name from index to menu. Okay, when we click save, you should make sure that your tab says menu.html and then we're going to modify it a little bit. So. On page 69, number one, modify the page title so that it says menu. So here, coffee house, we're going to add the word menu. Okay. Delete the home page content. This is step 2A. Delete the home page content, unordered list, and contact information. Unordered list, so UL through UL, click and drag and delete. And then it says contact information. So let's just go ahead and get this div with that as well. Okay, so we'll delete that div. 
Now, why didn't we do anything with our navigation section? Remember, we want our navigation section to be the same on every page, okay? Now, this H2 is going to change. Instead of saying relax at Java Jam, it's going to say coffee at Java Jam, okay? Let's take off the word coffee. That was step B. C says use a description list to add the menu content to the page. Use the DT tag to contain each menu item. Configure the menu item name to have a strong importance using the strong tag. Use the DD tag to contain the menu description. Configure line breaks as needed to display two lines of information within each DD element. So I'm going to start us off here. We are in the main section below the H2. We want a description list, so that's DL tags. It says each menu item will be a DT, but it will also have strong importance. So we're going to use the strong tag. The first one is just Java. Okay, now once that DT closes, we need a DD, which is our description. This is regular, first one is regular house blend. Decaffeinated, I hope I'm spelling this right. Decaffeinated coffee or flavor of the day. Okay, now this is where it gets tricky. Because the next thing is the endless cup $2, which is the price. That needs to be within the DD, but it needs to be on a different line. It needs to be a line break below. So we'll add a break there and make that go to the next line. So if we look at this in the browser. Oh, oh well, I didn't add the text after that. Durr. After the break, after the break. Before the DD closes, y'all, I've been here a long time this afternoon. It's time to go home. Endless cup, oh, two dollars sold. Um, I'll take that cup of coffee. Okay, so now if we refresh it, see the endless cup appeared a line below it, but it's still within that DD. And then this was bold and um, our DT. Okay, so let's continue on with the. I've added the remaining DTs and DDs, so you can double check those to make sure that you have that correct. Notice the BRs before the prices um, in both DT tags. Pause if you need to look a little further. Now everything else is going to stay the same on this page, so all we need to do is make sure that this works correctly. And our menu and jobs links are not going to work yet. We'll keep working on these in future projects, but our home and menu should work. So we should be able to go home and go home, menu and go to menu. Okay, so if yours work like that. So things you should be aware of as we're um, moving along in this process. Spelling is important. You don't want to have a website that, does, um, that has spelling errors. So make sure you're proofreading and trying to catch those simple mistakes. I know I make mistakes all the time. Um, and usually I have students in my class to point them out to me. But um, lots of you guys are learning from home. So I, you, I may not catch my errors. Um, but do check your spelling. That's super important. Make sure you are saving files the correct name and you're saving them in the correct location. As always, I'm here to help you. Now, your next goal is to complete the Fish Creek, which you'll do an index page, and then you'll do, um, I think it's the services page for that one, uh, a similar way, and then you'll do Pacific Trails Resort. You'll do the index page um, and the yurts page. Hmm, look up a yurt. It's pretty cool. I wouldn't mind going on vacation in a yurt. Okay, that's it. You're on your own for the next two projects, and then you'll need to take your test. Good luck. Happy coding. Email me if you need help.